that rusty and uh, the good thing is it looks about the same size so the seal I was talking about before has got to be in here and there it is so we're gonna go ahead and clean this up and uh, wire brush it blah 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 so I realized I must get this bleeder off because I have to bleed the brakes so um, I put some panther pee on there panther pee's uh, penetrating oil and um, I tapped on it with the hammer on the end and I gently went with the 10 millimeter and uh, she didn't want to budge. So we're just going to give her the old heater upper. At this stage, there's nothing on here that's made out of rubber that I care about. And uh, because I've drained the, the piston all together, I got to bleed these. So, uh, yeah, I think I'm getting the brake caliper not the fitting which I think I want I want that to expand and the brake bleeder to stay relatively safe so, tappy tap that's cute that's for pulling tacks get over there uh, then uh, you know it's a 10 millimeter on there. She's, I can feel she's hot. No. Rice. Damn it. I'm going to try some more. It is not coming off right away. It is a multi point bit. A six point, not a 12 point. Ah. If you can see that was glowing red just a moment ago. I used a smaller oil on that one. I'm gonna hit it with some uh, WD. Zoom out. Now I'm not using a bigger one because these are notoriously easy to strip or break. So I'm just trying to use a little guy. I thought I was able to move it a little bit before. I have to get another hit. She gave it up, so we'll go ahead and uh, let that cool off a little bit. She fought getting off the uh, socket here. I think that's hot. So, okay. We'll get the seal out next. Okay, so I got the seal out. This is the seal that uh, rides along here as the piston comes in and out. And that goes in that grid right there. You can tell by the, the grit and yucky on there. It got rusty. So we'll go ahead and... Um, clean that out and i think this is a good candidate i think we're good i'm oh, definitely gonna break clean the piss out of it um water i probably should have very first thing is bled all the brakes because brake fluid is hydroscopic meaning it picks up water and then it rusts so if you flush the system which is what i'm planning to do in the van as well as uh well all my cars are 10 years old pretty much except for the van so they all need it um I just put some new more fluid in. That's clean. That's dirty. So we definitely gotta clean this out. It's all yucky. So uh, we're gonna start bleeding the brakes. So uh, I got a succulator. So basically, it's um, it hooks onto an air hose and it just pulls fluid. So we're gonna go ahead and do that and see what we can do. Regenerative braking is just weird with this. Anyhow, um, so I had to move this parking brake on 
because it was up here and underneath there. That was kind of fun to take that apart. Everything's torgulated. Got the stupid screw in there. These are nice. They're nice looking. So hopefully that'll wear off and then become ugly looking. But right now, she looks pretty sexy. So we're going to hit some uh, spray on this, kind of prevent the rust. I haven't gone underneath here. I should have last year and sprayed it. But then I don't think I could get underneath there because I had stuff on. Yeah, there was just no getting underneath there. That's a new thing. It's uh, Saturday morning in the higher manual car shows here. So we got lots of cars. I'll pick up the ones I like the most. This is kind of interesting. It's a 71 Vega, which isn't designed for that kind of horsepower, but there's a frame in there and some tubs. She's got a little bit of a supercharger on her. Big supercharger. She go fast. Okay, we got a 69 Toronto. So she's a Ford. See a little upgrades at the bottom end. Your seat looks like it fit in the Marauder. She's got 351 Chevy, or um, a Ford. It's a little smaller, just a small block. Marauder, which is also 69, she has a 429 in it. Very nice. So we got a lot of 66s. This, however, and white walls. She's been converted to automatic. Wow. And then we have this. We have the right transmission. Sixty-three. Wow. This one's in progress. She's uh twenty-seven. Resurrected it. Yes, take the bow. Okay, that one's just awesome. With the head scoop, she's been beat on too. I like that. But this is my favorite bullet. Check out those mags. True fastback. Two seats there. She's got some shit. Some fancy going on there. Shift light. Flashes with center shift. And then the racing motor. Holy shit. $75,000 a buyer. She's a mint shit. It's a good movie. It's a little long. Bullet. I took this for a drive, and uh, despite rebuilding the calipers, they're still sticking. So I ordered another uh, caliper. They're $44 on the Amazon Jungle website. So I uh, bought this so about a year ago, and uh, it's time to install it. So um she's the solar power that's gonna be the template right there that i'm gonna cut out i'm gonna put it right up in the center up there and uh so we're gonna have some fun today we're gonna have some electrical some mechanical some laddering so this is the unit i did uh set it up and uh she's got solars and she's turning i can feel a breeze it's not very loud which i kind of like um I thought this had Wi-Fi, it doesn't, but basically this is the controller and when it gets to a certain temperature, I got it set really low to 60, it uh, starts turning. So if I turn that all the way, it should not be turning. It's still turning. Anyhow, uh, probably needs electricals. So um, basically, I'm gonna go find the center between two rafters, drill a hole through it similar to what we did last weekend with the roof vents 
um, I got to measure down a certain amount. Then um, I come back and uh, from the top, use this, which we'll cut as a template. And then I'll probably just use a jigsaw, go around there. Uh, if the rafters are 23 on center, so 23 inches across, then we make a round circle. If they're not, it's gonna be more of an oval. Um, I don't remember. I think it's 23. Then we uh, schlep this up there. This disconnects. Um, so I can do that separate. And this will stay in the house, of course. She, she's got tabs to get screwed to her after. Then um, this side goes underneath. I'm gonna have to trim back the um, shingles. And they said to roll them back. We'll see how that works. I don't know how that works. Um, this is gonna be a little bit of work there and then uh, slide her up. And then I got lots of adhesives. So they recommend a neoprene because the asphalt doesn't work very well, plus it affects the plastic. Then we nail every four inches all the way around, put the shingles back, put a little more glue on, stand it down, and uh, then we wire this up. So I'm not gonna have electricity's way up there. Uh, so I'm gonna have to uh, run some lines, but the circuit box is in the hallway in the second floor, and I got some PVC pipe to go through, so we just have to pull that. So. If I can get this on top of the house today, that'd be awesome. Um, I didn't have any of this, and I wanted some fresh. I went and bought that. Nine dollars. Everything's expensive now. I feel like an old guy saying that. Um, of course, you had to start the Harbor Freight, pick up an item or two. These were free today. Uh, nut setters. Because it's nice to be able to grab a whole set. Those are three dollars. This is because uh, my wife's BMW convertible, I lost the screwdriver. It dropped down in the engine bay when I was on the side of the road, slowly driving it home after the pipe burst for the water system, cooling system. So uh, this was a dollar nine. We're just gonna pop that in there. This is three dollars. Um, just this is a kit. You know, lately it's not been about the material as much as the holders lately. And then this, I messed up my T25, and this has a lifetime warranty. It's from Harbor Freight, and it's got screws in there. So I'm going to need this to get to this. But then how do I get this out? I don't know. So knife to get this, and screws to get that. Oh, uh, this has a lifetime warranty. Icon's pretty high quality, uh, even if it is Harbor Freight. And these were about $20, and it's got a full set. I... Harbor Freight's going to be around forever. And then this is a diamond wedge for uh, cutting your wood. So you just split your wood. Um, I don't have enough wood to justify getting a real, or like renting a splitter. So trying to do it without this is kind of hard. We won't be needing that anymore. So anyhow, that's uh, what we did to procrastinate this. But uh, it's only like 78 degrees out. It's overcast. Uh, We'll just get her done. And then uh, maybe we'll do the electricals in the morning, uh, running the wire. Shouldn't be too hard. Eh. Famous first words. TikTok, where the guy just kind of smashed things to get these out. And that worked for this. It worked for this. This one looks a little harder, but it goes to just kind of mangle it until it comes apart. Might be a, a life hack survival thing. Really, you know, let's say you buy a pair of scissors and you need the scissors, open the scissors. And this one doesn't seem to be doing it as much. In the TikTok, this just kind of popped apart. I do feel better about the whole thing. So, that might work. I'm going to put two hands into this. Well, the packaging one. This will do the trick. Okay, we got it out. Now let's we'll take our right one out. See how ready the screwdriver's coming in handy. This is a nice little kit. I wouldn't um, think these bits are going to last forever, but this is a. I've never had to use a screwdriver to get a set of tools apart before. That's a. It's pretty fancy there. I guess this becomes the container. The smart person put a little white paint in here. 40, 35. She's got all the different torculators. Oh, 
not sure about that. Yeah, we'll just give it a go. These are my uh, Torx from previous. You can see I broke that one off. I'm missing that one. So I ground that down trying to use it. Oops, there it is. Uh, this one I bought last summer. And, uh, yeah. Really twisted it. This one here, you can see that one broke right off. So, um, yeah, I mean, good luck with these. So, at least with the ones I bought from Harbor Freight, I can take them back. And they'll be a Harbor Freight till the end of the time. It'll be like last person go there and try and, you know, buy something cheap. Yeah, it's hot. So, I got this open. Um, I used to have that window open, but I think I sealed it up. So, yeah, it's hot up here. Always easy, I gotta add some more insulation. Uh, I've got my drill, my tape measure, got my headlight on, and uh, yeah, so get the light on up here. I do have one outlet, so uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So that's where the electricity is gonna come through. This is the original part of the house, roof line. She was what they call a four square built this platform a couple years ago and yeah there's my uh there's my roof so uh right around here it's my antenna right about here i gotta find things to stand on so that's my new antenna i guess i didn't hook up my old antenna it's designed to get a uh, tv from Cleveland. I have that going downstairs. That's my network cable. That's above my wife's bathroom. And then above the bedroom over there. So, uh, oh, great. Okay. So, there I got about 12 inches of insulation. And hence. Okay. I have. Not been over here in a while. So that's the center line. I got a, a rent up there. Oh, good. Let me know we're getting good ventilation when you see wasps. Uh, huh. Hmm. 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 So, yeah. Well. Let's sneak over here. There's some Smurf tubing to get to Sophie's room. So I think, I think I want to put it right about here, I guess. I don't know. It's just a, an island of paper. Okay, so can't put it in the middle. Let's get that. I think I want to put it right about here. This way I can get to it. So we're gonna take some measurements and uh, see what we can do here. Well, I turn off the flashlight. You can tell there's light showing through. That means that we are getting airflow. Um, so turn the light back on. Well, here's our hole, by the way. Uh, so there's pl these panels here. They're designed to let the air flow over. Uh, I brought myself a handy little piece of wire here. I'm gonna stick that through the hole so it's uh, very easy to tell where the hole is. Uh, so basically, we're gonna make a big circle around here. We know where the roofs are. A little disappointed these are all rusted, but they are what they are. 930 seconds. So it's a little bit thicker than three, uh, half an inch. Didn't expect that, but we got plenty. There's 20 inches between these two, so we, we can make a nice round hole. Then uh, we can put the jiggles right here, and uh, away we go. Um, do see some rust spots, so these nails are rusting, so this will help ventilate things. We do have a ridge vent, but it's it's pretty freaking hot up here. I like this shelf. Shelf is handy. So we're going to have to run the jiggles. Probably cross over to here, then up here, then across or something. We'll figure that later. Boy, it's so hot up here. 
I didn't want to do any storage over here. I mean, in theory, we could build a platform and do storage over here. We, um, we got enough storage elsewhere. Plus, it's a little warm to hold things. But we're going to make a hole. That's going to change things. Don't want somebody just chewing over here for. Oh, what's going on there? Some of these nails just didn't, you know, hit stuff. I'm really spending quality time up there and didn't, like, hit. Some of these are just the nails for the, the short ones are the nails that were used for putting the roof on. But the long ones are supposed to be for, you know, holding things up. I'm like, missed there and there. What's going on there? Oh, well. You can tell here I got plenty of slottages. Each one of these is 100 amps. The difference between a, like a 50 and 100 amps is like 40 bucks. So I'll just add a new one right there. Plus, if any of these GFIs go out, I can just walk, you know, from here to here as opposed to going downstairs to the basement. So that's what the thought was on the second floor sub panel. See, it's a little ugly. I guess I could put a picture over or something. Yeah, I can see my wire from here. Well, if you could see, it's right there. So we got two ways of getting up on the roof. One way would be to put a ladder there and go up. The other way would put a ladder here and go up. But um, I'm not sure. Now think about this. The traditional way is to go all the way over here and put a ladder up there and go up uh, the old part of the roof and then walk right over. I can't get over here. So I got a lot of options here. I didn't have this option before. I've been up straight, but that's before the deck was there. I don't want to be on the thing, so yeah. I need to put my sand dots off. I think I'm going to shoot it right up there because I'm just going up that way. That way I'm not dragging things around and stuff. So we got two ladders. We got one ladder. She's a 40 footer. And that is uh, 28 feet, I think, but minus two, so it's like 26. Then I got a 28 foot aluminum. They're kind of permanently borrowed from Ellen, our neighbor. They're all over there. Problem with the 40 foot one, she's, she's wheelie. It's hard to move by oneself, so I gotta move this around and figure out which one I'm gonna do. I think I'm just gonna do the lift test. If I can lift the 40, I'll use the 40. If not, I'll use the 28. Definitely not using the 24 or the 12. We decided we're gonna use it up this way. Unfortunately, the rope wasn't there, so I'm putting a new rope on here and uh, tight that up, but I need to cut this and uh, use a, um, a lighter there to burn the end to keep it from fraying, because if you don't, it'll just fray to no end. And hint, didn't basically melt the end there with your uh, black lighter. You got to get the same color, it works better that way. So now we can uh, get that up there. Yeah, I probably should get the other ladder, which would give me four feet overhang because theoretically you want it to overhang more. But uh, I think we'll be okay with that. Maybe we'll be. I need to get some food. I think I drank too much coffee on an empty stomach. Now I'm kind of got the jitteries. <sighs> Don't need the jitteries when you're up there. <sighs> hmm, I smell like mouse pee. There must have been some Mises peeing on that. Well, there's a hole up there now. I should have come down a little more because, yeah, it's this part here might hit the ridge vent on the other side coming down that way. So that's going to be interesting. Okay, so the next part, uh, it's probably going to be grabbing the different ladder. This is, this would be fine, except for the fact that I have a better ladder. <laughs> I have two better ladders, so I think I'm going to bring that back down. Obviously, I forgot my sawzall, and I can tell you what, when I opened that hole up, all sorts of hot air came out of there. It was like heat wave in there. It's at least 130 in there. So, uh, yeah, I'm kind of committed now. Kind of can't, you know, kind of go forward. We should have more shingles. I don't know if I do. Okay, so we upgraded ladder 2.0. It still needs to only go about that high, but at least it's a wider, thicker, heavier ladder. Uh, time for this to get up there, because I got a hole on the rough I need to cover. What are other tools I need? A spatula. For fuck's sake. 
It's slowly sliding down the hill. Great. Boy, you can still feel the heat coming right out of there and I have the door closed. So now I gotta figure out how I'm gonna place this. I can go over another two inches, but uh, this is gonna be my problem child. Wish I brought the blower up here. Gonna blow that shit off. I don't know what degree this is. This has got a little slope. I could, I could slide right off that. I'd aim that way. So go down just 10 feet. Okay, oh, and there she goes. They didn't mention that in the instructions. You know, while sitting up here, transversing oneself to the ladder, one could just look around for a little bit. Maybe postpone the movement. I got it into place. Not 100% happy with it, but it'll work. Of course, uh, this moment, really could use that adhesive. There it is. And a caulk dispenser and some nails and a hammer. But uh, I had to move it over because of the issues with, you know, the end of the other roof over there that I should have realized but didn't. So my hole is going to go underneath. But I'm going to do that in the attic. So that'll be fun. I just need six more feet. Uh, one thing I didn't anticipate is that plastic thing wants to slide down the roof at uber speeds at any moment. So I had to very precariously balance it like on the ridge, like that ridge looks up to behind me. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, I really don't want to do this. At least got the better ladder, I guess. So, nails, roofing nails, and I need a hammer. Yep. And I need the caulk. And the caulk, I'm gonna all the way around, put a couple layers, because I got a whole tube. You yeah. know, whole tube, caulk. And then um, we'll nail her down, and then I'll caulk the shingles on the three sides. Now, I didn't, the bottom one, I'm leaving like that, because that's what you're supposed to, even though the instructions said, alluded that you go all the way around, which is just stupid. Um, it's weather, plastic weather tight. Uh, it's, not as hot as I thought it'd be, but it's hotter than I thought it would be. Yeah, it makes no sense. Okay, let's just do this. Okay, so I got my hammer, my belt, nails, different sizes, caulking gun, caulk, knife in case I need it. Going up the ladder again. I had not previously been on the roof since uh, 2016, the day they put it on there. I went up there and took a look around. Uh, of course, they had ladders set up, and that was a little easier. So, uh, yeah, I can get up there and... Put the uh, goop around it a couple times, slide it into position, goop, uh, nail it, then put the goop on the shingles, press them back down, and we should be good. And hopefully, I can be done with this. Then tomorrow, we're about the other side. So I gotta kind of elongate the hole a little bit, make a little oval underneath. I can do that with a better part jigsaw, then I gotta run the electricals. So um, it'll probably be cooler in there tomorrow for two reasons. One, it'll be tomorrow in the morning and the hole will already be in, you know, letting out some air. Right now, the fan, potentially, if there's sun, will spin. It doesn't need the controller. I found that out. I knew that was a possibility. It wasn't like, oh, my God, my hand's cut off. No, it doesn't run that fast. Okay, well, that part's done. I think she's going to be watertight. I'll be checking in the next rainstorm. I'll put some, like, newspaper down below it. Uh, so got to do with the digitals but at least right now it's a hole and it's air's coming out so it's 750 cubic feet per minute full speed and i figure it's about 10,000 square feet so um it should be 18 changes and you know every 18 minutes it should change the entire air or something i i forget the math but um it's gonna help nonetheless and it's a big hole I drove this about 20 miles and um, this still is rubbing despite replacing the, um, uh, the rebuilding the caliper, putting in new rubber seals and cleaning it up. So um, yesterday, I, two days ago, I ordered a new caliper. These brand new ones are $43. So um, this includes everything but the brackets. Obviously, the, the pads are in the, stay together. So basically, I need to uh, swap the... Uh, caliper parts so i have the uh fluid brake line and then the emergency parking brake so um i'm gonna try and do this in 20 minutes i've taken this side off twice now and that side once no i haven't taken that side off once 
this side twice, so I should be able to do it. Um, so I'm going to give it a go. that done because uh, I wasn't including bleeding the brakes as part of that process you might have saw my super proprietary hold the brake that's from bleeding with one hand the brakes are weird on this I don't know how it does vacuum so if you turn the car on it's electric it doesn't do anything but if you open the hood the engine starts so whatever vacuum mechanism maybe it's produced that but because it's electromechanical brakes Meaning it does electric generation first, and it just doesn't feel like a normal car. But anyhow, um, those are on there. I just need to put the wheel back on, get this out, maybe take a shower. I did get a lot of fluid out, and it's still coming out pretty grody. Remember that this is supposed to be clear, so there's a fair amount there. So hopefully I've drained that. Um, later this week, I'm going to do the other side. That's actually the farthest side. I should have started with that first, but this is the one that's going to then we'll bleed the other side. I'm just trying to flush all this shit out. And the reason for flushing is because A, it looks nasty. B, it picks up moisture, which causes rust, which causes me to replace the brakes because then they seize and they come back. Uh, being that this is got that twisty thing, which is applied by the parking brake, every time I put the parking brake on it, pushes the cylinder out. And that's, so right now it's kind of loose. I just gotta, well, it's not too bad. It was looser before. I gotta give it a drive, and hopefully this one doesn't, you know, overheat. I'm gonna go to Akron, some of the state sales. Um, I took a Mitratrine, you know, it's the antidepressant drug, which my doctor prescribed 10 years ago, and it makes me comatose for 24 to 48 hours, and uh, it helps because then my, my uh, allergies just kind of come right down, and then my throat clears out, my nose clears out, but I can feel it coming back, but anyhow, um, I don't know what the point of all that was. Oh, I've just been completely unmotivated to do anything or move. Other than that, it's been perfectly fine. Um, this is running. I didn't hook up the digitals yet. It's way too hot right now. But um, I realized that the box that I tied electric, which I thought did Wi-Fi, but I was confused because the box has been unopened sitting in the basement for so long, I made up a news story. Um, it basically turns on and off based on the temperature. So. I, right now it's running on the solar and clearly there's lots of solar power so it's doing its job this is just a bonus uh, i do want to hook it up the other thing is supposed to rain at two o'clock i'll go up there it'll be a little bit cooler and uh see if it's leaking if it is leaking due to my fuck up where i positioned it too close to the roof and then i had to move it over so the shingles aren't right and i wasn't able to peel the shingle backs like these are triple ply shingles and they're weird they're two dimensions so they just, normally it's like, I got a shingle, I got a shingle, I got a shingle. This is like, I got a shingle and a shingle and a shingle. 
And so in some places it was four shingles thick. I couldn't just roll it back like they suggested the manual and then nail it in there. So I got nails at the top and a lot at the bottom and it's just not 100%. Uh, plus the way I cut it moved, I, I don't like the way the shingles are. Long story short, too late now, is uh, I think I can put some flashing tape around, some really sticky stuff to go around there and black and you know it's not like people go up there and go hey your roof was ugly so um that's assuming it leaks so i don't think i don't know we'll find out two o'clock rain okay i drove to the harbor freight and uh used the brakes a lot went fast and slow and she's cold to the touch the front one's got a little bit of heat so um yeah looks like that was successful painful the rebuild kit should have worked, but it didn't. So we'll do the caliper next in the back. I know that these are problematic, but it shouldn't be that much of a problem. Well, it's raining, so we're checking for leakages. And I don't see any water. I see some tar. Um, I didn't get to hooking this up, but uh, no water. Definitely take this out. I don't need this. This is what I was talking about before, about the different layers of shingles. It's not consistent. Oh, it's hot up here. I feel a little breeze. Well, it's not turning right now, because you ain't got no suns. Those are gonna remind me to come back up and get that. So we we'll need to go back to the other side. No leaks is good. This is pretty much ready, this shelf that Joe wants. And um, so I'm looking at other pieces of wood and uh, thought this piece was a candidate, but it's got a big knot in it, a big knot. So uh, yeah, no, back to the drawing board. I think this piece would work, but I'm not sure I want to use that piece. It's a good piece, maybe I will. Here again, you'd think this piece is good, except right there is a big branch knot. And it's gonna extend past this. It's... This is three and a half, and that's, so it goes right in there. Plus there's some holes here. So uh, yeah, no, 